Hey, what's up, everybody? You just tuned in to Real Lives on 104.1. I'm your host, Mr. James Ian, and you join us on a Wednesday, November 11th. Now, I am joined in virtual studios with my two good friends. I got Mr. Miguel Colon Jr. in the house. Miguel, how you doing, man? Good, man. Good. I'm having a good day. Happy Veterans Day to everybody out there. Today. Happy Veterans Day. Yeah. Ken's not on this segment. He's uh, doing some stuff like buying a new car. I was going to wish him a happy Veterans Day. And also to your father, Miguel. Longtime Thanks, Marine. Man. Retired. Oh, no worries yeah, at man. all. And another veteran uh, I welcome to the broadcast. Overseas, you know, serving, if you will, Mr. Mike Hurley. That's Mike, what's right. up? Florence Elementary School Safety Patrol, nineteen eighty four to nineteen eighty eight. I've seen some stuff, man. I've you seen guys, some stuff, you know. You guys don't get enough credit, too, man. Dude, the way you, you know what? that lunch line down. People oh. forget the eighties when I mean blow pops were on every corner. You know, yes. yeah. people were dealing. People were going to Sam's Club, buying a case of a hundred, bringing them in. Like it was so hard to keep it out of the schools. And the problem wasn't the sugar; it was when the kids started coming down and crashing after lunch. Yep. Like, dude, just to see your best friend in the bathroom on like a sugar low. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, no wonder everybody has type one diabetes Ooh. nowadays. Hey, hey, man, you got some of that blow pop, man? What, you, what do I gotta do for a pixie stick? That's my. Man, Our generation had pixie sticks. They were like, you know, yeah. Kool Aid. Yeah, eat it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> remember, remember, you had those fun dip packets they gave. Oh you? my! You know God. that Kool Aid you're gonna eat? Yeah, use yeah. a sugar spoon. You yeah. <laughs> but the problem was, they give you that one thing that you're supposed to like lick, and it was yeah. candy, and dip it in. But I would always bite into that after like mm -hmm. five or six times. So then you're right back to just like. Those cops That's in all those 80s movies testing cocaine by <laughs> dipping in and wrapping it on your cup. Is it cocaine? <laughs> I think it's rat poison. I think it's rat yeah. poison. <laughs> That's when you know you're really hard on the stuff, Mike. When you bike the stick, you don't use it. That's when you mm. know you, you got a problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do. Took me God years bless. to get off it. I like the big league chew. They were like, hey, we should make something that looks like chewing tobacco, but make it out of gum. That's yeah. what kids need. Well, remember, mm -hmm. remember candy cigarettes? Oh, where yeah. you could literally just blow fake smoke. But yeah, yeah, I, I was a bad safety patrol man. Like, if you gave me like a Kit Kat, you could run in the halls. I'd look the other way. <laughs> <I didn't laughs> Mike was taking Mike was on the Mike take. Was on take. Yeah. I was on the take. My partner found out I had to set him up, take him down. Yeah. <laughs> some kid, some kid ran in the halls yeah. and like twisted yeah. their ankle, and Mike's yeah. jacking people up and like, you know what I told everybody? As soon as they're an ankle twisted, they're gonna start looking at where the missing book fair money went, and then they're gonna look for the gerbils, and we're all yeah. doing time. We're yeah. all doing time. I'm not yep. going down for this. Yeah, safety yeah. patrol hangs himself in the bathroom. I was, what happened? Yeah, I was gonna say, man, there were some guys coming in trying to sell now and later's, and they found him hanging from the flagpole you know yeah. Yeah. things happen things yeah. happen yeah. to people mm. That's so <laughs> There's like the Chinese kids sitting in the cafeteria. Michael, I mm. thought we had a deal between mm. the tongs and you. Mm. The now tongs. I'm seeing yeah. <laughs> yeah. now I'm seeing problems in the streets I pay for. Michael. Wait until recess. Bring it to the dodgeball court. Make it look gotcha. like an accident. <laughs> hey, uh, I got a quick question for you, Miguel, uh, for Veterans Day. Are you guys doing anything special at the Sausage Castle this year? There's always a Veterans Day party over there. Always a Veterans yes. Day party, mm -hmm. man. Gotcha. But COVID. Everything's a little weirder, man, because we just want to be responsible. And I know that sounds dumb. So the girls giving the lap dances to the guys in wheelchairs have to wear a mask. Is that they what's have going to put, on? They have to put a piece of uh, cellophane down on them. Uh, you know, seems right. Seems right to me. Yeah, yeah, that's mm -hmm. it. Man, it's been weird <laughs> because, like, I mean, we used to throw really big parties over there. We liked it, you know, a thousand people, uh, like two thousand for the big Halloween party we would throw. And we've got to be, we've got to throw smaller parties. But I think, and I think any of you guys, especially like coming from comedy, you know, we plan big. You might think like, you know, these 50 people shows that we're doing sometimes now where it's all spaced out looks mm -hmm. weird, you know, because like yeah. you feel like rooms are empty and you want that big energy. And that's the same thing with like the parties we throw. We want big energy. So when there's like, you know, because it's an 80 acre estate and there's a, there's a lake that's probably about 25, 30 acres that we throw the outdoor events on. But when it's not packed, it makes us feel like we didn't do well, you know. Like mm -hmm. yeah. I do, kind of feel like I. But but I don't want to be. I, I at the end of the day, man, I don't want to be responsible for somebody uh, becoming sick with COVID nineteen because I pretend like because there's a new president, it's over now. You know, like, I've been not. like, oh, it's done. Yeah, you know, it's not done. It's gonna be years, years it's, of us feeling this. It's not. It's and not. I've 
I tell you what, like the second time, the second big wave of the lockdown and stuff like that, that's when I started actually knowing people that caught COVID-19. Now, I haven't known anyone who's passed away, but I've known three people to have been hospitalized. And the thing is, there was no variable between the three people I know that were hospitalized and the other people I know that caught COVID. So it wasn't yeah. like I could be like, hey, yeah, that guy, though, you know, he had a pre-existing condition or he smoked too many cigarettes. Just three people I know got hospitalized where they had to be intubated and it was a horrible experience. And the rest of the people I know just shook it off like the worst flu they had. But mm -hmm. having no variable, having nothing to think like, well, I know because this I should be fine or because, you know, it is a little scary. It is a little scary. It's and I don't concerning. Be, yeah, it's concerning. I don't want to be it's the concerning. guy. I don't want yeah, you anyone don't want to be I know to, 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 to have to suffer because I wanted more people at a party. You yep. know? I hear what you're saying. Uh, um, also, we got some very, very special birthdays today, you guys. It is Leonardo DiCaprio's birthday. That's Leo. right. Now, I'm that's very special to me. Let yeah. me tell you why. Because Critters who do you three. think? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> come on. Killed it, man. He made his career. Who do you think, um, between him and Donald Trump, who said the N-word more? And I'm talking about his role in Django. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember Donald Trump and Django, but I still think uh, that mm -hmm. Leo may have. <laughs> <laughs> I like two of them, maybe just by yeah. two. <laughs> uh, it's also the birthday of Demi Moore. Now, Demi Moore ruined my life, and here's why, guys. When I first started dating Mrs. Yan, uh, she asked me a question that I regret every single day of my life. Mm -hmm. um, she said, hey, who do you think's a pretty celebrity? Now, I thought, because I just started dating her, this was an innocent question, but we all know from experience that, you know, that's a loaded trap. I, I should have just said, you are the most beautiful woman I know. Should have just said that. Would have been a safe answer. But no, me being a dumbass, I was like, oh, Demi Moore. I think she is a really pretty celebrity. I love Demi Moore. So from that point on, anytime Demi Moore was in a movie, a commercial, a video, anything, she would bring up the fact that, oh, there's that girl you think is so pretty, Demi Moore. Like, it didn't stop, bro. It still hasn't mm. stopped 27 years later. I still mm. hear crap about Demi Moore. So Demi Moore ruined my life, and she still looked good, by the way. See, Just that's, put that out there. that's why when a woman asks you something like that, like, who do you think is hot? You got to say, like, your mom. That way it gets you out of going to all those family functions at, like, Christmas <laughs> and Thanksgiving. <laughs> like, like, nah, I can't bring James around you, mom. He's got some weird thoughts. Just, yeah. You yeah, gotta man, get good fellas Italian on Italian on her. She's just like, who do you think's hot? You'd be like, I don't need this at home. Janice, <laughs> <laughs> Janice, I'm out here earning for you every day. <laughs> and then that's I gotta come we, home to this. That's all we had, Karen. That's all we that's had, yeah. Karen. You just killed us. You just killed us. You just yeah. killed us. I love that movie, God. All right, man. Well, I've been at home, and I know you guys have too. I don't really go out anymore. Even though people think COVID's over, I'm still one of those guys like, I'm going to stay home, stay safe. So I've been binging a lot of TV. And they brought something to Netflix that made my year. Uh, almost made uh, COVID pandemic worth it. They RuPaul brought the Chappelle. Oh, I've seen that, sir. I was on that once. Almost one. <laughs> it's very political. I can't get into it. But anyway, okay. they, brought <laughs> they brought the Chappelle show to Netflix, and I've been mm -hmm. a kid in a candy store trying mm -hmm. to get my kids to sit down and watch it with me, man. I will tell mm -hmm. you this. I had forgotten how much misogyny, how mm -hmm. sexist, how racist, how just toxic that show is. You, mm -hmm. can, you can't do 99% of the sketches that he did. Yeah. At all. To, Go ahead, Miguel. To be fair, though, you really couldn't do them then. He just <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that's the thing. Because remember when we watched it, we were all like, oh, my God. God like, we were yes. shocked. Yeah. yeah. He's definitely oh pioneered, it, and that door's closed behind him. It kind of yes. reminds me, too, because you're not the first one who said watching it now with new eyes makes you go, oh, my gosh, I used to find this funny and love this. And not that it's not. But it's a it's a bolder statement for you now to say, yeah, I still love the Chappelle show. It's almost like I'm a huge Bond fan. Love James Bond. Love yeah. every single Bond. Yeah, there's better ones, than, but yeah. I just love the movies. And I'll go around and I used to be like, yeah, I love James Bond. It's one of my favorite movie uh, series and everything else. And then I watched some of the older ones with rest in peace, Sean Connery. And you just see him. You remember the films differently. Because I remember when I watched him and looked back at him, I'm like, yeah, anytime he hit a woman, she was an evil woman. Then you go back and watch him and realize, 
you go back and watch and you realize there were some women he just spacked because he felt like they were giving him the information he wanted at <laughs> yeah. the time. And I'm like, oh my God, I've been running around kind of saying I love this. Type. Yeah. You need to rewatch he, your favorite stuff every now and then. Just well, to, it's, like, it's like, honestly, and this one's horrible, but I've let me go on record and call me for my misogyny because it needs to be called. But when the president, when he was running in 2016, and, and I think this came out Access Hollywood 2016, when he said, when you're rich, it's almost Billy like Bush. you can grab him by the P. You can do whatever you like, want. Yeah. yeah. And people were like, I cannot believe this man. I was like, I mean, like, that's, <laughs> that's not to be said. But I think we all kind it's, of thought it's, that. But it's understood. That was, I was like, man, he said some horrible stuff, guys. And this is the only part that I was like, I've heard this said before by people I like. And I yeah. should have been like, but it's usually in the yeah. middle of a rap song, not in yeah, private on yeah. a bus. Yeah. And they're pouring champagne on her, to be fair. Yeah. And she loves it, you know? Yeah. yeah <laughs> this is the experience she never got with her dad, you know? So yeah. it's important. But there's one scene in particular from the Dave Chappelle show. I was like, man, you can't do this. It's when he was talking about the black white supremacist who was a blind guy who oh, didn't yeah. know that he was. Mm. Great, great premise. Great sketch. Oh, one of the best. Oh my God, but he had the white people saying the N word just on the show. Yeah. And they don't bleep it on Netflix. It's just, you're like, who? Who? Clay, Clayton ah. Bigsby. Clayton Bigsby. Yes. Here, here's yes. the thing, James. Yes. They didn't give those white people scripts, they just said, roll with it. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, everybody <laughs> stopped. Like, oh. <laughs> they were just, that wasn't even the direction the skit was going originally. Going. They were just like, <laughs> a lot of energy here. We, we talked about it a little bit yesterday, I think. And uh, what a lot of people still don't know is Neil Brennan, the head writer for that show, yeah. white Jewish kid. Yeah, oh, we and, knew that. Yeah. And I, I think at the end of it is when Chappelle, when Chappelle walked away from that show, it was still like a hit. It was like a number one show and he was making a ton of money and nobody knew why he wanted to do another season. And he said something about the fact that it had started feeling less like people were laughing with him and more like people were laughing at him. Like he thought he was doing like some great satirical stuff to point out how ridiculous this is. And when mm -hmm. he saw people taking it as, Oh well, you're, it's okay because you you know what you guys are like and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like Ice Cube said. Ice Cube said he remembers being at a concert at NWA, looking at the crowd and seeing nothing but middle class white kids, and thinking, "Wait, wait a second! Like second. you know, yeah. this isn't it. This isn't it. Yeah, I thought I was yeah. talking to the streets, but the streets aren't paying me." Mm -hmm. No, so let me, let me no. The white people are like, "Yes, we kids. we've now moved into those streets and put up huge brownstones." Thank you very much. Yeah. We, Thank you. we didn't know about Compton until we heard you talking about it. It's a lovely area. I've got yeah. to get my artisan mayo there. Oh, man. Oh, Miguel, you're talking about the one with the red pimento. It's oh. to die for, <laughs> James. I like the one that tastes like Thai peanuts because. It's sometimes I'm just like, do I want a Thai sandwich or just a regular mm. sandwich? Yeah. I don't have to decide. <laughs> I mean, if they take the time to stuff the olives, I'm coming out for it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny, man. But when we get back, I want to ask you guys a question about the upcoming holiday to see if COVID's going to put a damper on your Thanksgiving. Uh, guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a little bit. Oh, oh before we go, guys, this, uh, a couple seconds here. The other day, it was Nick Lachey's birthday from 98 Degrees. Now, now, really quick, guys. Mm -hmm. Guilty Pleasure, who's your favorite boy band? Um, okay. Damn. I'm trying to think. 25 of, seconds. Oh, like, you can do boys, it. Boys Too Bad, are they a boy band? Or is Boys Too Bad a boy band? I'll take it. Is mine's Guilty just... Pleasure, like, mine's in sync. Like, yeah. that's, I jam out the sync, man. I was thinking I was doing gotta... at the Halloween party uh, last I uh, saw that. I was, I was jealous. I was jealous. <laughs> Mike, take us out, man. Who's your favorite Guilty Pleasure boy band? Oh, man. I got, I got to go with all of them. I mean, you're a liar if you don't have at least one song from a boy band that comes on and you yeah. don't change the station. You're like, yep, this is my jam. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, guys. We'll talk a little bit more when Real Laughs returns. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you guys for listening to Real Laughs on 104.1. Don't forget, you can listen to all our past episodes on the iHeartRadio app. That's right. Go there and listen to 100-plus episodes of Hilarity, guys. Also, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And now you can actually look at us on YouTube and see why we have faces for radio. That's right. None of us are good-looking, but we're pretty damn talented. Now, guys, I wanted to talk to Mr. Mike Curley and Miguel. Clone Jr. about the upcoming Thanksgiving holiday. Now, you guys know that's my favorite holiday. That's yeah. the holiday I get excited for. We have like 30 people deep. I will say that with COVID, 
I don't think we're going to be going all out like that this year. I think it's just going to be our immediate family, like probably eight people. And that's it, man, which is new for me. Like, I don't know how to cook for just eight people. I know how to cook for like 40 to 50. So I want to ask you guys, are you guys doing special things for Thanksgiving? Or are you guys just going to be like, nah, I'm staying home because of COVID? J- James, let me tell you, COVID's got nothing to do with it. It's the election. This Thanksgiving's okay. going to be tense for some households. <laughs> People just staring at each other. It's going to be like, you know what you think about, like, like trench warfare, and the guys on both sides are both just thirsty and tired from the heat, and they're looking over, wanting to sh- fire a shot. That's mm. how it's going to be at some people's Thanksgivings, man. You ain't lying. And, I didn't and, even and, think of that. Oh, yep. and you know what You know what it is, too? Uh, uh, like, sometimes you think – racially people vote a certain way sometimes there's just that like stigma of oh but latinos vote this way or black people vote. but then you get into like the super religious latinos who once you get into that religious card for some reason it changes their political beliefs it, and then true. so i've even got family members that are super conservative because of religion Then I got some family members that are super, like, liberal. Then I got people like me that I'm just like, it's Thanksgiving. Everybody shut the hell up. I came (laughs) here for food, man. Mm -hmm. Pass the potatoes and quit tripping. Yeah, Yeah, dude. I'm the only one, and we've talked about before, um, my family lives two hours south, both my brothers, my mom, my dad, my nephew. And uh, every time I go home for anything, the the game is trying not to talk about politics till the very last minute so you can enjoy the whole visit. But uh, alcohol I, comes out. Yeah, I, I was the only one in my family that was going for uh, Biden. And I got to tell you, if anything, I'm making a point of making it home this Thanksgiving because I'm going to be walking up that driveway like WrestleMania. I want my music <laughs> playing. I just want to be coming in like boom, 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 boom. Because it's, boom, boom, you know, boom, boom. And at some point, I'm just going to be like, my dad's going to be saying grace. And I'm going to be like, I'm thankful that I can sit in a room full of losers and still love you all. So, <laughs> wow. hey, you know, it's going to be funny too. the little jabs people throw. They're going to be like, hey, mm-hmm. go ahead and pass the mashed potatoes. Mike, you know how that works, right? One person makes all the mashed potatoes and then they pass them around to everybody to eat for free because that's the way we're living now. <laughs> yeah, right? Your evil man became president. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, hey, it's great that we have this pie. But until everybody has had a piece of pie, we can't say everybody has had a piece of pie yet. We need to <laughs> make sure that everyone Damn. has time to eat their pie and then we can decide how much of the pie was eaten hey mike oh. how many rolls do we have i mean i mean the rolls that are physically here not the ones that are gonna be mailed in tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right and everybody only gets one serving of cranberry no two servings of cranberry yeah. sauce and if there are two servings i need to see signatures that's yeah. right that's right now they're going to be talking about portion size needs to go up because, of course, you can't just have the normal size. You people want them all. That's right. Yeah. I'm just going to be like, man, nobody's stolen something like this since the pilgrims took all the land from the Indians. Huh, guys? <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> be like, hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Is there any special needs or minority person here? Because, you know, I know they weren't here to do any of the work, but let's make sure they get most of the food. You know? <laughs> 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 Damn. <laughs> Mike didn't say no. That's what's funny to me. Yeah. Hey. Hey. hey, I'm all for helping the less fortunate, man. <laughs> uh, I'm, with you, man. I'm with you. I didn't even think about that, Miguel. You bring up a great point. There's going to be a, some tense ass Thanksgiving Oof. meal. Just quiet. Oof, like, just man. quiet. People looking at each other like, I know what you did. I know what yeah. you did on a day. I Are, know you Are you happy now? Are you happy? For the devil. That's yeah. Who you're going for. <laughs> the devil. <laughs> Mm. And his sexy ass vice president. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. That part. <laughs> maybe gonna lie. maybe I can just finally at the end of it, me and my dad can break the wishbone. And when I get the bigger half, explain to him these are votes, and yeah. this is why we won. Because <laughs> my side got so- more. No, Michael, love- you got the popular. Half. You got the popular. This, bone. Is-, <laughs> this yeah. is the electoral. The electoral half. counts the wings. <laughs> Let the me. Toes. Yeah. Hey. Let me explain something to you, too. You know why Trump, you know what the biggest problem is against Trump's administration? And I'm like, yeah, math. Yeah. <laughs> Say, hey, Michael, make sure you set the plate for a bunch of dead people and cats that are registered for this. <laughs> I know oh, you I didn't know we were having more Republicans over, Dad, right away. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> cold-blooded. Hey, what do you think? Oh, Let me ask you this real quick, though. Uh-huh. What's Black Friday going to be like? Is it going to happen? Like, you know it's got to happen. Like they got, they're not going to lose the money. But how are they? I do asked. It? I was at Walmart today, and I asked about that, and they're saying they're pushing people to do it online. 
Oh, to not be open like years. Yeah. yeah which is how it's always like because i think cyber monday is is there's i know there's some doorbusters that are huge mm. but we usually as who, who gets the doorbuster hardly anybody mm. you know no. the cyber monday deals are usually yeah. really good you know like you know yeah. mm-hmm. and it's no longer black friday it's all colors end of the week because joe biden is putting it end to systematic <laughs> racism <laughs> <laughs> yes he is listen yes, he's right. president next year right now it's midnight black friday uh, you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll do it slowly but surely you have black friday but we get white wednesday we still yeah. come a little bit before you but we're working on it <laughs> <laughs> now it's funny you guys you say that you bring it up all this stuff up about trump and biden because one of the things republicans said on tv when trump lost well when Trump never admitted that he lost, but when they called the race for Biden, a lot of Republicans were making a point. See, see, we didn't win, but you don't see us rioting, do you? We're not going to do anything because we're adults. The very next day, there is a post by a trucker. I'm not even going to say his name to give him any um, love, but he made a post saying, look, I've been getting a lot of followers lately. and I just want to tell you guys. We're going to take this country back. All those truckers are going to get together. And on November 29th, we want you to park them. Don't move them because we're not going to stand for what happened on election day. We're going to take this country back. That's right. I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. Don't work. Just park your truck if you don't want to. Because See, they're they are Democrats give- now. <laughs> it's going to not work. Hey, I like uh, these guys. Yeah. Uh, I think what you're forgetting is the Democrats can do the same thing with our Priuses. So, true. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Yo, no avocado toast for anybody until this is over. I like I I, I I can imagine the boys in New Jersey that are just sitting around like the hell you're not gonna work. Like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I got a load of stolen TVs. This guy make it down to Miami. You That's right. Be, put them in a Penske then, because you're yeah, getting yeah. them there. Amen. So this guy made that post, and I've also been seeing something on Facebook. I don't know if you guys noticed it, but it's been just a. Not a hashtag, but it just uh, an address for a new social media app. It says at something something uh, parlor. And yeah. I was wondering mm-hmm. what the heck that was. And parlor, as I come to find out, is a freedom of speech. Facebook and I put up my yeah. I put up my air quotes, a freedom of speech app where you can get on it and like minded people can say what they want without the threat of prosecution well, socially. And what it basically means is Without, yeah. <laughs> without the fact checking of Facebook or the reporting or yeah, they're not censoring any of the speech. And that's yeah. what I say. Cool. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And n- none of this stuff should matter that much. None mm-hmm. of it should matter that much. You know, like if Facebook wants to censor you, you should go to another platform. Cool. Yeah. That's the thing. Like I really mean that. Cool, man. Like let's have a billion platforms so that we don't have one that becomes the voice of everything. Mm-hmm. That is the problem. We have Facebook yeah. and Instagram. And so mm-hmm. there's two of them. And Twitter. And Twitter. You know, and Twitter. Yeah. Twitter's yeah. like Twitter's kind of like the, the, the little brother. You gotta bring him around, but you don't really want to hang out with him. But you'd I be know. surprised how many people they live and die by Twitter for yeah. some reason. I never yeah. got into it. I, I, I was never know. that guy. I don't know, man. Like I agree with you, Miguel, on some point. Like, yeah, you should have a way to express your opinion and everything else. But there's also a thing where when you had that kid or that guy when we were growing up, the old guy telling us all the problems with black people, you know, you yeah. had to, <laughs> to hear that. To hear that, you had to be your grandfather. You had to you had to be in the neighborhood and go past his yard when he's like, "Hey, let me tell you a couple of things." But nowadays, like, I just feel like you gotta be a little bit more responsible when something you put on the internet makes it to how many millions followers. It's easier to spread your propaganda and your hate speech. So it is, yeah. Like if you're trying to incite violence, yeah, Yeah, I think you have obligation to shut that stuff down. I hundred percent agree that. I just, I just think. You're 100 percent right. If you because there are people trying to incite violence, right? But at the end of the day, I want the responsibility of these things to fall on the user. Mm-hmm. Because if the user needs people to constantly tell them what the truth is and what lies are, mm-hmm. we're in a dangerous, dangerous spot. And I will say Facebook is taking it a little too far. Someone put mm-hmm. up a photo the other day of two German shepherds. And there was a cat against the wall, like pinned against yeah. the wall, hiding. That from was the a Ger- good one. Hiding yeah. from the German, hiding from the German shepherds. And uh, I think it was Preacher Lawson's mom, Preacher's Lawson, P- Kimberly Lawson, posted. Everybody captioned this, and all I wrote was like, "Damn Germans," yeah. you know, because yeah, and I, it was the first time I've ever I got a memo from Facebook like this doesn't meet our code of ethics and everything else. And I sent back, I'm like, you need to relook at that because yeah. in the context, they're German shepherds, and the cat is about to get attacked. And they wrote mm-hmm. back, they're like, 
okay, after reviewing, we're going to go ahead and repost. I'm like, no, don't even anymore because it's losses. It's not even funny now. Yeah. <laughs> I got, guys, I got one. I got one. I said, hey, man, to make sure that this election is safe with COVID and to keep people safe because there's such heated political views. I said, mm-hmm. November 3rd, we're going to let Democrats vote. And November 4th, we'll let Republicans vote. And right, which <laughs> you've seen a couple of yeah. times. And yeah, Facebook, yeah. And Facebook, and Facebook said, put that they were, uh, that I was, uh, what was it? They sent me something basically that I was false spreading false news. False news, elections. Yeah. And I'm like, man, like, that's why I'm like, I don't like the idea of parlor when people are jumping on parlors so they could spread hate. But I also like the idea of mm. let's have multiple sources for people mm. to talk on. Because at the end of the day, now Facebook's telling comedians, oh, that joke doesn't meet our standards. What's the standard of a joke? Mm. You know, like, like, I mean, what's the standard if it's not inciting violence? And how do you incite violence when, I mean, here's the thing. Uh, violent, being inciting violence to a point comes from the listener. And I'm going to use something that is going to sound very controversial but just hear me out there are people that will hear speeches as beautiful and as peaceful as i have a dream and still want to whoop ass because of it you know they're like we need to tear and or and so it's like it's the individual now of course when you go on a speech and you start telling people you know these group of people doesn't need to be in this country these people are trying to kill us i mean and i've heard it i've heard it uh, where white people have been the victim of this where it's like yes. the whites are trying to yes there's definitely times we need to step in but i worry when facebook and instagram and all these places because i understand that they're private businesses they don't belong to the people they're private businesses so us choosing to use them we do choose to use them under their standards and that's why i do think there might need to be more options to give them a little competition to decide when are their standards too harsh and when they aren't gotcha well i will say that i agree with both of you on some sense i think mike i think you're right and there has to be some kind of 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 system of checks and balances to make sure things aren't one-sided or they're hateful. And I agree with you, Miguel, let them all go somewhere else. But the thing that these people were citing was they were getting tired of people like Twitter. They will take down things that are just fact checked not to be true. And they did that to the president um, a couple of times during election uh, this past week. And they were angry about that. So that's why they started going to parlor, which I got to agree with, look, if you say something outrageous and it's, it's false, then someone should say, this is not accurate news. This is false. I agree but what are you going to do with the inquirer? Mm. Well, I think we all know that that is like but, the gospel. <laughs> sir. Put, it, put it on Fox news with the rest of the entertainment. Yeah. Shows. True, true, true. Mm. Indeed. Uh, we got a couple seconds left here, but when we come back. We're going to be talking a little bit about the fact that Kamala Harris did make history. And I just want to pick up a little bit women when we get back. They don't want to talk about what college kids are doing now that they're going to virtual school. They are actually uh, pulling pranks. And the pranks they're doing is funny as hell, but it's also dangerous. So, guys, don't go anywhere. Keep it locked right here on 104.1 Real Radio, Real Labs. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you guys for listening to Real Labs on 104.1. I'm your host, Mr. James John. Joined in virtual studio with Miguel Colon Jr., Mike Hurley, and now... Kenneth Miller is joining us fresh from the car dealership because he just bought a brand new car. Congratulations, yeah, man. Ken. Appreciate it, man. Until I got to make that first payment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They be throwing yeah. everything on. You want to get gap insurance? Do you want to get tire insurance? Do you know you know um the warranty ends at 48000 We could stretch it to 100000 How about you just give me the 100000 mile warranty? It's your, yeah. You made the car. How about you make the car last to 100000 miles? Mm-hmm. You know, I don't you know. come here and get it fixed at 48000 you know Mr. Miller, Mr. would there? you like the tires on the car? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking too, like in the Marvel movies after the snap, you know car dealers are like, you need that snap insurance. <laughs> <laughs> know when he's gonna do it again. Yeah, but we got you on snap insurance. Okay, that's guys? awesome. I, I kind of thought I kind of thought a hundred thousand miles was just the standard bumper yeah. to bumper warranty. Now I didn't know they were pulling this whole fifty thousand thing. Yeah, man. fifty thousand. Yeah, because when I got my car, the last Toyota I got was a hundred thousand. But I don't mm-hmm. know. Maybe it's because they're like, man. They really, they really taking this warranty thing seriously. Yeah. <laughs> now, don't, don't they stretch out am, payments man. to seven years now, Ken? It's I, not like yeah, four or five. Can, I, yeah, you could do five, six, up to seven. I did yeah. five. I did the standard five. I'm not about to be paying Dude, for this. And even I, though I keep a car for like seven, eight years. Right. Mm-hmm. I get to 99,000 miles on the Versa. I brought it in. I'm like, I wasn't even hearing noises, but I'm like, yeah, it's making some rattling in the engine. <laughs> I'm like, you know, this is, this is the last time you're paying for everything. I want bumper to bumper. I want bumper to bumper, man. True that. 
True that. Well, I'm glad you got to make it here, Ken. Congratulations on the brand new car, man. Thanks, Be bro. sure not to please nobody. If you see Ken around town, the insurance is not kicked in yet. Do not hit him. Don't hit me, though. <laughs> Please, Ken please, wants please. to be one of those comics who you write on his car. Don't ask him. <laughs> <laughs> Take a picture. Yeah. Hashtag Miguel said so. Yeah. Uh, hey, hey, hey. The car's black, so use black Sharpie. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh-huh. Get off, you feeling scratches. Hey, get over there. Get over there. Gotcha. Well, Ken, I'm glad you made it for this uh, segment because I'm talking about Kamala Harris, man. The fact that she made history becoming the first woman of color to be elected vice president. Shout out to her. And and God forbid, if anything happens to Sleepy Joe, she might be the next president, man. I don't know if we're ready for a black woman president. That'd be different because she's going to tell believers like, no, no, I'm talking. That's right. She don't play that. But I wanted to shout out women, uh, give them a little love to women in comedy because uh, we're trying, women are making history. So I wanted to find some of the funniest women that we like in comedy. So I asked my wife, Michelle, baby, who's some of the funniest women that are funny? And she replied, women are funny. And I'm not making that up. My wife does not think that women are funny at all. But then she said, I'm just joking. And she said, one of the funniest people that we ever saw live was Leslie Jones. I don't know if you gentlemen have ever seen Leslie uh, Jones performs, but bro, she was performing with Cat Williams. Uh, I think it was Pimp Chronicles 2. She performed for a good 45 minutes, man. I've never seen a, a, a comedian, a woman like that, with that much energy to command the stage the way she uh, did. Yeah, she yeah. completely destroyed yeah. Destroyed that place, <laughs> rebuilt it, and destroyed it again. That woman, I thought there's no way Cat Williams is gonna follow that. There's no way this man can. I mean, she, everybody's on their feet, gave her a standing ovation, but then Cat did come and do his thing and destroy it. So I just want to say, if you've not seen Leslie Jones from her uh, her run on Saturday Night Live, any of the movies she's in, she's like Samuel L. for me. Even if a movie's bad, she's always entertaining in it. So I just want to shout out Leslie Jones. I got one more, but I want to know if you fellas have any woman out there, comedian that you find very funny. To people should be watching okay well i'll go with my next person <laughs> oh no i didn't know you were asking i didn't know, I didn't know, you, know you, you were asking you, 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 I was, next person so yeah, i yeah. was gonna go straight oh dude straight no, up right. I, 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 I knew I, 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 <laughs> off the top of my head wanda sykes is one wanda of my sykes favorites um it's very funny samora is one of my favorites adele givens um one of my favorites and one of our our babies man i think i'm a morales is one of the funniest comics out there that's that that's a woman like legit yeah, man. I tell you this much: a lot of a lot of the the female comics that I that I grew up watching, I still think are beasts. Like Margaret Cho's a beast, Maria yeah. Bamford's a beast, Elaine Boozler. When I was, I, I watched an old Elaine Boozler special from the '90s, and she always reminded me of like Andrew Dice Clay's little sister. Like you know, yeah. she was just this tough bad chick. Um, and then there's this chick, Jen, Jen D'Angelo for, uh, she's actually, you can see a lot of her videos from flappers. She was on that show claws for a while. She's yes. hilarious. I know what uh, you're talking about. Yeah. Ali Wong's a killer. Ali um, Wong is funny. I found Ali her Wong's late a beast. man. Yeah. yeah. He is hilarious. I'm going to go um, back a little bit further with you guys. Um, one of the first female comics I saw live, uh, Marsha Warfield Marcia from, Wolfram. uh, yeah, wow. Night Court. She's wow. still performing today. She has a residency in Vegas. I used to catch her when she was coming through Florida way back before I was even doing stand-up. But then you read, um, there was a show on for a while called I'm Dying Up Here. And it was based on a book called I'm Dying Up Here, which was comedy in L.A. in the late 70s, early 80s. Mm-hmm. Uh, Marsha Warfield was one of the comedians on the scene when it was David Lehrman, Jay Leno, Robin Williams, just yep. all these huge names doing open mics and time at the comedy store. So for Marsha Warfield to hold her, and Whoopi Goldberg was on the scene at the time. So mm-hmm. that was the level you had to be at to hold yourself. If, if women think it's tough in comedy now, imagine <laughs> when it was basically 100% male-dominated, 70s, early 80s, and Marsha Warfield would go in there and stand up against the likes of Sam Kinison and stuff like that. And she is just a beast on stage. She's such a good writer. Um, locally, I'm impressed every time I see Gina G come back in town. Man, so it's it's crowd, it's man. Bro. Yeah, like, you just said it. Like, said it there's times there's comedians that need every bit of their material to win a crowd over. I'm one of them. I need my material to be working for me. Gina G is one of those people I've seen go up and without even getting into her material, she can have the crowd just falling over her right from the get-go you know it's such a great gift to have so yeah damn i would be remiss if i didn't say that too mike good one gina g's a star yeah man he's a star man Uh, uh, for me the other woman i think is hilarious in movies and just 
comedies. It's just, I love seeing her because no matter what she's in, it's always good to see her is Kate McKinnon. I think yeah. she's absolutely <laughs> hilarious. Well, man. Yeah. But does she do stand up? Uh, nah, she's, she, comedy, I think she's more of an improv actor, though. Yeah, yeah. More yeah. Improv. yeah. That's like yeah. Melissa McCarthy, man. You put Melissa McCarthy in something, and I, I assume mm-hmm. it's going to be hilarious. You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Kate, Kate, Kate is legit. My funny, the funniest person on Saturday Night Live. Bro. Amen. She, yeah, she's the boss. Remember, of SNL. When she did Giuliani this weekend, yeah, yeah. 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 with yeah. the fingers. <laughs> Bill, <laughs> Bill Burr hosted what two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Yeah. Bill yeah. Burr hosted, and on his podcast, he was saying he learned so much. From just sitting there watching Kate McKinnon work. He's like, here I am, you know, big name comedian, everything else. He's like, but watching her, I was learning comedy yeah. from watching her. I'm like, what a huge freaking compliment, you know? Because when yeah. she takes over a character, there's times when you're like, is that Kate McKinnon? Like when she came out as Giuliani in there, I was like, that's Kate McKinnon. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's how good it is. Like, you gotta <laughs> stop for a minute. <laughs> she, she's good <laughs> because Kate McKinnon got the crazy eyes. Yo, she got the sorry, crazy man. eyes thing going. Yeah. Yeah. A, a weekend update. Oh, when she when she puts up the balls on balls Colin, of the yeah. Colin, he's like, "Yo, how? Why is it warm? Like, why?" Is <laughs> and you know, I, Yo. I I never understood. And like, I look at your faces right now, and yeah. um, we're all ugly as hell. Mm-hmm. But yeah. most of us ended up with beautiful women, you know. It and happens. I never really, until Kate McKinnon, people would be like, "Oh yeah, I can." I can, a sense of humor is just so sexy and attractive. I'm like, whatever. You got other reasons for whatever. But Kate McKinnon's one of those girls that she's she's good looking. But then when she's making me laugh, I'm like, oh yeah, I'd marry that girl. son. Ch- you exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no lie, I'm not BSing you. Go find something if she's dressed up and she has like a blonde wig on. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, she's adorable. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. that's beautiful. Yeah, she's yeah. adorable. Yo, when she, she did Kelly adorable. Ann Conway, I, oh, that's yeah. when yeah, I said, yeah, it. yeah. 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 I'm just yeah. looking yeah. for a girl yeah. that can yeah. make me yeah. laugh. That's yeah. all. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. How honestly, when I saw Michael Shea, Colin, and Kate McKinnon one time up there, I was like. SNL getting good looking. It's weird. It's like, yeah. SNL used to be all ugly people. It used to be Michael the outcasts. Yeah. yeah, I saw Michael Colin and Kate. And I was like, okay, they're going for yeah. some sexy yeah. now. Yeah. Right, and, you know, dude. when Colin's pulling Scarlett Johansson as yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. You know, something. Yeah, and all he does is weekend update. Like he That's doesn't it. even get his he doesn't even do skits. Well, he's anymore. the head he's writer. writer. Yeah. He's the head writer. Him and for Michael Shea. Him and Michael Shea. Yeah. 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 Michael Shea looked like two dudes who met in college who would have never been friends, but they were both big Michael Jordan fans and drunk together. Together, and then Colin got kicked out of his frat, and then Michael Shea needed help with math, and now is eighty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? yeah, either that, <laughs> or, either that, or they were. We are Marshall, where it's like, yeah, look, yeah, we yeah, lost yeah. half the team, nah, so nah, now nah, we got nah, left the nah, black kids. Nah. Yeah, hey. or this is, or, they, or, or this is two dudes on the GI <laughs> Bill. You know, <laughs> the GI Bill. <laughs> Yo, son, this weekend. Weekend update. Michael Chase said, um, "Yeah, man, if Trump would have won, we had we would just go go out and kidnap white people, man. Calling me and my boys to go kidnap you and put you in a refrigerator." <laughs> and he was like, "A refrigerator? No, nah, no, nah, the box of the, the box of the <laughs> come in." <laughs> Uh-huh. <laughs> bro, when I tell you, son, I do. Let me, bro. The weekend up, they had me. Die. Y'all, y'all probably already talked about Chappelle already. Yeah, monologue, yeah, yeah. a little bit. Little bit. Yeah, no, we talked about the monologue. We didn't touch the monologue. monologue dog, was dope. Chappelle said he said the people that were complaining about his his parties. He said they probably the did dates on farmersonly dot com. Yeah. He said what kind of what kind of chick only smashes a farmer, bro? <laughs> gross, <laughs> gross. That's gross. <laughs> I like when he said, "We're just you're gonna have to do nice yeah. things to yeah. random black people who don't deserve it." He said, yeah. "Buy my like, ice cream cone." You gotta get buy yeah. a dope deal of ice cream cone because y'all was killing black people who didn't deserve it. Dude, yeah. I, I, I love to see those farmers only messages and see if it's anything like Tinder. Like, no, I didn't ask how many inches. I asked how many acres. How many, how many yeah. acres? <laughs> inches yeah. of rain, you pervert. Uh, yo. I did. Rain, I did. No, I asked if you have a hoe. <laughs> 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 How many holes you got? Yeah. <laughs> I want you to cover my face in oops. Somebody really much. said and was like, you know what, man? You know what we need? Our own dating website. Because <laughs> yeah. because Margo out here dating people on um, blackplanet.com. Dude, it, <laughs> you don't read too much into Farmers Only. It was the only way you could say white people meet without upsetting people. Yeah. Yeah. That's all it was. Farmers Only, but also if you're a stockbroker or whatever. <laughs> <it's cool. laughs> uh, Isn't there many farmers that have their own dating website? Mm. 
They're mm-hmm. like, here's the deal. Just if the founding fathers would have been cool with you, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> then you can, yeah. then you can use it. And by farmers part. only, we mean if you own the farm, not if you worked it. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Dude, mm-hmm. it is two it is two point five million. Oh, cause I lie. it's two point five million farms in America. I'm about to say, woo. If That's farmers a lot of only people, doesn't have an option in Spanish. Yeah. Then we know it's racist. Uh, <laughs> you know true. And if you true. guys, if you guys looked at the electoral map and looked at what portion of the country showed up red, and then overlaid the amount of farms and where they are, there's no yeah. doubt what type yeah, of people yeah. are on. Yeah. Farm like if you want to book a yeah. comedy tour and you want to book colleges, just look where it was blue. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That makes me think of um, uh, what's his, what's the writer on the Daily Show? Um, black guy. Mm. Um, who had his own show just a little bit ago? God dang, uh, World War Jr. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. He talked about on his on his comedy. He was talking about how how black people don't do, uh, you know, we do songs to let you know where to go. He said James Brown was like Atlanta, Detroit, Chicago. He, them all to see these black people safe at. <laughs> 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 That's too much. Hey guys, we got a little bit of time left. So before I go, I want to ask you guys performing anywhere this week. Yeah, I'm actually going to be at the Leesburg Center for the Performing Arts in Leesburg, Florida. It's being put on by Taylor Boyd and OrlandoComedy.com. And he actually just hit me up right before the show. Uh, Tickets are going for $25. It's me, Kermit Gonzalez. Kevin White's going to be a good show. Usually goes for $25, but he gave us the go-ahead. If you go to OrlandoComedy.com, put in the promo code REAL, you're going to get $10 off every ticket you purchase. So also Nice, that's a great venue. Yeah, it's a cool little venue, man. Yeah, um, this Wednesday, ahead. I'll actually be in Port Charlotte at Vasani's, the best nice. comedy club with the best food. That's so why we like going bro. there. You're, you're yeah. there right now. I am there right now. I you forgot. Yeah, right it now, is Wednesday. Yo. Where it's are you going to be? Yo. It's Wednesday. I just want to say, man, I don't know if I missed the beginning of the show. Happy Veterans Day to all my we veterans did. out there, we man. Shout out. Shout out to Happy my Happy Veterans brother, Day to you. The, the best, the biggest, the biggest fraternity on the planet, son. Amen. And Miguel, where are you going to be, brother? Nowhere this weekend, man. I'm sorry. Gotcha. Thank you guys for listening. We love you. On behalf of Real Last, Ken Miller, Miguel Colon Jr., and Mike Hurley, and myself, James John, you guys have a blessed evening. <laughs>